Welcome, welcome. Welcome to another painting class with me, your host, Paige Weber. I'm a, the chief pixel pusher and paintbrusher over at Gumption. And tonight we are going to be painting ice cream. So get your brushes ready and let's start. Uh, first and foremost, you're going to want to actually access the trace image and the reference image, which you can do in the comments. Or you can look at the description below and check that out. Um, so you'll want to either print those or use those for reference. Let's see. Our class will take about an hour. It might be a little quicker this evening. Uh, and again, if you want to find the reference imagery for this, so you can find it in the chat. Uh, tonight we will be using uh, Cobalt Teal, uh, CAD Yellow Deep, and quinacridone, coral, and sodalite, maybe a little bit of opera. If you don't have those colors, all you really need are blue, yellow, and red, and maybe you can mix the blue and the red to create a dark purple. Uh, but if you have the colors listed here, uh, that's great too. You can get those out. So again, that's cobalt teal, cad yellow deep, quinacridone, coral, and sodalite. And again, you know, this... I tell you these names because often students want to know what they are, but whatever you have is going to be good enough. So uh, we'll have a little bit of fun tonight. We'll also probably be mixing a little bit of green. And I have an example to show you. So I will get that out so you can see that. Also, uh, if you have questions, throw them in the chat. Don't be afraid to throw them in chat and let me know that you're here. So if you're joining me tonight, say hello in chat and uh, we'll get started here. So I'm gonna switch my camera view so we can get rolling. All right, so you can see here, this is, I'm gonna zoom in here. This is what we're painting tonight. This is really fun and it's kind of a quick, quick little painting. You can get as detailed as you like, but uh, it's pretty fun. Here is the reference image that you will want to download and trace or uh, print out for reference. This actually is a photograph by Sebastian Coman. That's how I'm going to say his name. It sounds sort of French. And I got it off of Unsplash and he's a phenomenal um, photographer here. So I have to give him credit for this image. And so without further ado, if you don't have questions or comments, I will get to painting. You can see I've already made a mess of my desk here today. Kind of a crazy evening this evening. But first I'm going to trace this onto my paper. Let's see. And I'm just gonna tape it down here. You are welcome just to freehand it as well. This just kind of keeps it nice and in place. And it also helps kind of class move along pretty quickly. So what's nice is I've taken my pencil lead on the back of this and it will transfer to my paper. You can't quite see that, but uh, let's see if I, I need to press a little bit harder here. So again, if you're just tuning in, go ahead and check for the, the imagery for this class. It is in chat. Uh, that means that if you're tuning in by Facebook, it would be in the comments below. And of course, if you're tuning in through YouTube, it is in, uh, in the chat there. So tell me, if you're tuning in with me, I would love to know what your favorite ice cream is. And even if it's soy ice cream, I want to know. So this one is a little bit bigger than my example here, but... This is a real fun 
uh, one because it's got such vibrant color in it. And who doesn't love a little bit of color? All right. Hey, Colin, it's nice to see you here. Yeah, it totally looks yummy. I, uh, I would have some of that if I could. Let's see, we'll get rid of this banner here. Nice and refreshing. So it's possible this class will run a little bit faster than normal. Uh, I found maybe I was just having so much fun when I was preparing for this class that it just flew by. But Okay, and I have this little area here. And I'm going to cheat and use a ruler because... I cannot draw a straight line for anybody's business. We'll see how it transferred. Not too bad. Okay. All right, let's get to painting. So I kind of started this in sections with the ice cream and I really love the effect that this gave. So what we're gonna do is mix up some color here. And I actually, when I first did this one, I mixed up two colors. So I mixed up quinacridone, coral. This is a beautiful color. This is a Daniel Smith color and it's quick becoming one of my favorites, I think. I mean, opera is pretty rad, but this is pretty, pretty good, too. So this is opera, and opera is kind of like a neon pink color, if you're new to this class. And it is my favorite out of all of the pink colors. So we'll just kind of we'll start with the red here. And I'm going to try to keep this in frame so you guys can see it. Sorry for all the chatter. All right, so when I started doing this, I just wet this very top uh, ice cream scoop here, or scoop of ice cream with some water. So we're gonna do a little bit of wet and wet technique here. And it's dry here, so it my uh, water often dries pretty quickly, but you can see how wet that is there. Gonna add a little bit more in here. There is such thing as too wet, but we'll try not to, to get it there. So I'm gonna kind of water this down just a hair and tap it in on this side. If you don't have if you don't have a pink or a quinacridone coral, you could use any color of red and just water it down. And then I'm tapping in this quinacridone coral in here. And kind of creating this form shadow. Form shadow is a shadow that rolls away from the light. And as I recall in our image here, we've got some color here. Can you see that? So I'll just dab a little bit of this over here. You could even go in with a little bit more pigment. So I've dipped into my pigment here. And just let it roll down here. Okay, so I'm going to leave that and let it dry this way. I'm happy with how it is. 
I say that and then I keep fiddling. So I'm happy with how it is. I'm going to let it dry. Well, actually, I'm going to dry it with the hair dryer. So if you are behind, this gives you an opportunity to catch up. Again, if you're just tuning in, we still have time. You can go into the chat and print out the imagery uh, there to join us. So I'm going to mute myself and get to drying here. Okay, so you saw me kind of moving my paper around there. My color was starting to pool kind of just at the very edge. So I was kind of shifting it around so the water could flow a little bit over. And uh, you can do that too if you find that you need to tonight in this process. Okay, so next I'm going to go in with this yellow here. And this is a really beautiful yellow. Uh, I don't use it very often and I really should use it more because it really is gorgeous. It's a deep kind of warm, warmer yellow. And this is Cad Yellow Deep. So if you don't have Cad Yellow Deep, you can use Hansa Yellow or if you have a lemon yellow, you can use that. Um, use what you have. If you have an Indian yellow or uh, a quinacridone gold. I think this is quinacridone gold. You could even use that. You can see that's a little bit warmer. So we're going to approach the yellow portion of this much like we did this top portion. We're going to lay down some water. And, uh, you know, you might have to move your paper around so you can see where that water is. And you'll see that I have a round brush, a pointy round brush, um, and that will help me kind of get into the crevices here. And I have a little bit of pigment, it looks like, on my brush, which isn't bad because it kind of helps me see where the water is in this lighting. So you can see good and wet. I've avoided my little uh, M&M like items. Okay, so now I'm going to go in. I'm going to dilute a little bit of this yellow, much like we did before. I'm going to tap it in on this side. And then I'm going to take this pigment that's a little more concentrated. And I'm going to tap it in on this side. Whoops, I got a little outside the lines, you guys. Let's see.
Paper towel to the rescue. Never fear, paper towel is here. And I'm going to dip into the pigment a little bit more. And what you could do is if you do have a quinacridone gold or you wanted to mix a little of your red pigment, you could warm up your yellow just a little bit and tap it over here on the side. To help kind of really push this form shadow. All right, so I'm going to hit one of these little guys here with this yellow while I have it on my brush. And this guy here. And then I'm going to make, I'm going to dry this. Now I see I painted outside the lines yet again. So I'm just going to take my paper towel and dab that up a little bit. So I'm going to mute us again. And as you're painting, you can keep painting here. I'm going to mute myself and we'll just keep moving along here. Okay, so you can see, I'm going to zoom in here, how this has made some uh, marks here from where the water was and it dried. Um, you know, if you don't like that kind of technique, you can soften it a little bit more or you can just leave it. Now, I'm really loving it here and enjoying it here. I may go back in with another coat of yellow. We'll kind of see how we're doing uh, as far as time and how it looks kind of when we get there. But the beauty, I think, of this assignment is we can really uh, enjoy watercolor for what watercolor does well. 
So hopefully you're still with me here. Again, if you have a favorite uh, ice cream and you want to share it, I'm all ears. So now we're going to move into our next guy over here, and he's going to be cobalt teal. Uh, you can use a turquoise if you've got one. Uh, you can use a blue if you've got one. What's nice about cobalt teal is it's kind of opaque-ish, and it just has a different feel. And it's it might be a little bit hard here, but it's kind of this beautiful tealy blue. And we're going to approach this one much like we we did uh, the last two. So I'm going to just lay down some water. We're going to work wet into wet here. I'm going around all these M&Ms. Might not be able to see them so well here on the camera. But you can see it's all my watercolors already, or my water is already drying here. Okay, well, all right. So I'm going to go in with a little bit of this teal, and you can see it spreads pretty nicely. These core colors are great for that. And then I'm going to go in with a more concentrated paint application here. Just going to tap it in. Looks like we have a little bit of a darker area here. And let's take a look at our reference photo for it. So we've got some darker areas here and kind of around this M&M. And it looks like we're starting to kind of get set up here. And again, you know, if you want to lighten an area, you've got too much pigment in it, well, you can take your brush, put it in your clean water and dab it on your paper towel and you can lift lift your pigment out if you want to and tap it And I'm just going to let that dry. We'll kind of see how where we land here. But of course, I'm going to paint some of these M&Ms this teal color. So while I have it here, I'm just going to paint these guys in. You'll have to be careful not to drag your arm or your sleeve in it. That's I'm kind of notorious for doing that. And really, you can paint your M&Ms any color. You'll notice that I changed the order of the M&Ms to what I, where I wanted them to be. So you can totally do that. Uh, also, if you want to mix green, you can mix your teal here with some of your yellow, and you can create a really nice kind of Easter egg green. So I'm going to make this one a green one. And you can even tap the bottom part of that so that can be a little bit of a shadow. This guy I'm going to leave alone until that dries. And it could be drier time again. So I'm going to get out the dryer and dry this and give you a little bit of time to paint it. And I will be right back.
Okay, let's see. So we're back. Mine is dry and I'm going to, the plan is to kind of finish this whole thing and then we can go in and tweak some of the details. So we're gonna move into the glass now. And what you can do is you can really dilute your yellow. And I need to clean up my, my area here. I'm just going to wipe this one up. And I'm going to just take a little bit of my yellow, really dilute it down. We have vanilla kind of down here, but it's got kind of a a yellow tinge, but not too yellow. So I'm just going to actually go all the way up to the ice cream here. Or the yellow ice cream, I should say. And then also we have kind of some yellow here on the sides of the glasses. Now we'll probably darken this up here with a purple or sodalite. but we've got the base here of this glass. And you might want to just speckle some yellow here and there. And we'll kind of let that dry as we move into other things. So we can, at this point, because we have all of our areas uh, painted, we could paint in some of these M&Ms while the base here dries. So I wanna make sure that I've got some, some rosy M&Ms in here. So I'm going to get this one on the bottom. And these brushes that I'm using tonight, um, I had some questions about them recently and they are um, silver black velvet brushes. I have three of them here that are this round brush. I often use Trikel brushes, but um, these I got from Dick Blick. And uh, so if you have questions about the brushes, that is what they are and where they came from. Still just filling in my M&Ms here. And if I want to make it look like there's light um, shining on the top of these, I've just dabbed my brush on a paper towel and I'm just gonna lift here. You might have to dab it again. This is kind of drying already on me, so I'll do a little lifting there. See, and I have a teal M&M. &M. And I can still take my teal, you know, if I do a second layer over these other M&Ms, I can do another layer so I can have a darker bottom here. So I'm just doing it on the bottom part. Tap in that pigment. OK, 
Okay, and now I have purple M&Ms to, to do. So I'm going to mix my quinacridone coral with uh, this teal color to create a nice purple. Whoops, we got some yellow in there. Oops, that's all right. We'll do it over here. Kind of creates this dusty purple color. And I got a little overzealous here with the yellow, but that's not a problem. We can paint right over it. Tapping at the bottom, you can have a little darker area there. And we'll do this last M&M here. Actually straighten that out. Do this guy. Okay. So we're getting somewhere, actually, and I do want to, I think I'm going to use a little bit of this purple, maybe dilute it just a hair, and we'll kind of get this area that is kind of the bottom of this glass. You can see it kind of curves here. Now we may go back over this in sodalite if we need to, but you can see this, this brush gets a very thin line of action going here. And you know we can define the sides of this glass here with this purple color a little bit. Of course, we're going to get the bottom here. You can even dilute that a little bit more. You could do a little bit of a shadow. That might be more than I need here. But that's okay. Just kind of get it across there. Okay. Put a little bit here in this base. Now I'm going to mix up a little bit of soda light over here just to have it. So if you have paints gray or even if you have a black, you could dilute a black or you can use the dark purple and do it that way. So I really like thin brushes because they can do a lot of lighting and detail work that you can't do sometimes with a bigger brush. So I will be using this brush here to kind of clean up some lines and do a little bit of detail work. Because one thing that will help make this look more realistic is noting that there are shadows underneath the ice cream where it sits on one on top of another. So let's look at our reference image really quickly. And you can see there are some dark areas here and here. And we've got some crevices and uh, some areas that are a little bit darker. So we're going to paint those in. We're also going to do it for our M&Ms here on the underside where there's a little bit of a shadow in places. So you can use your purple 
that you mixed up, or you can add your sodalite to that. I'm going to use a little bit of sodalite here. And you see as I mix it in with this purple that we made, it just makes it a little bit darker there. You can kind of go in. We have this area down here that kind of shoots off. It kind of follows that paint line there. I'm going to get this underneath our ice cream. It's kind of like a little triangular shape. This might, I might need a little bit bigger brush for this, but we'll kind of get in underneath this guy. So as you are exploring your watercolor journey, I highly recommend that you do invest in some thinner brushes. Uh, this brush actually is from Trickell. They do a nice job with their brushes. It is a golden Taclon brush. And look, it looks like I forgot one of our M&Ms, so I'm gonna have to paint that guy in. I can actually paint in that area now. But you can see how quickly this kind of grounds things. So don't forget that things have shadows and make sure to note it as you are working in your painting life. It will really help make your work look a little more realistic. And give it some depth too. Okay. So I'm going to dip this guy in my purple and just get the shadow here. Also, now is a great time to kind of add texture into our ice cream. You can see that there's quite a bit of texture here. Let's see if I can get you a little closer. It's quite a bit of texture here with a granulation of this paint. But you can go in. Let's see. You can go in. Get some more cobalt teal mixed up. And you can do another layer. So we have this crease here that we can paint in. And you can see how it's also helping kind of really make this look like ice cream. And you can dab in some of this texture. To help give this that ice cream feel we've got quite a bit of it here too i'm a big fan of layering watercolor to create some depth and value We can also do this in the pink. So we've got some texture here. All along here. And just dab it on there. I'm 
Oops. This helps kind of make it look less perfect. So it really does look like a scoop of ice cream. You could also probably explore this with salt as well to create that texture to you. And for this yellow, I'm going to, let's see, I'm just gonna mix in a little bit of what's going on here, a little pink color. And we can add in some of these ticks and darker areas here. We've got a bit of a darker area form shadow here. It kind of follows along this way. Actually, it goes all the way over here, but I'm just going to take it to there and soften this edge by wetting my brush and just kind of scrubbing that edge a little. Okay. All right. So we have a little bit of work to do here on our glassware. So you can, there are some shadows in here, some darker areas, and you can kind of play with that. You could even dip into your uh, gray here, our soda light. We've got some dark kind of areas in there and you can see by giving it that contrast it really starts making it kind of come alive here. And these are kind of darker. And surprisingly, this area here is pretty light. I'm going to just kind of darken that up here. It's fun to really see how watercolor separates, especially when you do mix paint colors uh, just from three or four colors. And that looks like a big blob, but it's got quite a bit of water in it. You can just lift it. This one's looking a little bit more vibrant than this one even, so that's kind of fun. So uh, one thing we do need to do is do this lip of the glass. Now, if you'll look at your reference image, pull it up here for you. You can see that there's a dark line here and some darkness here, but it's not all the way across. So just make a note of that. When you are looking at an image, really look at it and see where's the dark and the lights. It will help you uh, if you just take a few minutes or seconds even to look at that um, and really help make your work a little bit better because it's really about observation half the time, I think. Art is just about observation, and sometimes it's hard to slow down uh, and take a look, which I am guilty of, uh, but sometimes I just have to remind myself to, whoa, slow down. So I'm just going to – and I may need to make that a little bit darker. Got it kind of going across here. I did change the color of that M&M, &M, so. Okay, so that gives us a hint of our glass. You can see that lip there. And I think one thing that we really need to do next is 
give our little M&Ms down here uh, a shadow, and then I need to fill that guy in. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm just going to go under these guys. Might need a little darker here. Kind of go off here. Tap a little darker here because they were the darkest where they hit directly on the table there. And I guess we'll make this guy green. We have this lovely green we can reconstitute. Okay, so we'll let that guy dry. It doesn't quite look green on my screen here, but it is green, I assure you. So if you want to add a little shadow to the M&Ms themselves, all you have to do is um, just do a second coat of the color that they are. I'm trying carefully not to dip into my shadow there. I'm gonna hit this one in the back too. And my little teal one looks like I hit it already, but it could use a little refresh. I think I love uh, watercolor for food because it is just fun because food is so vibrant usually and colorful and it's just a lot of fun to focus on food. What questions do you have for me? You're probably still working away, but uh, if you have questions, you can throw them up here in chat. And always, if you need to, you can rewind and replay this to keep painting on. You don't have to finish within class time. If you want to learn more about uh, me and what's happening. You can check me out on YouTube. You can see my other videos on YouTube. You can also hit IHaveGumption.com. And I want to do a big shout out to my Patreon subscribers. Colin and Laurel, thank you so much for supporting this channel and helping make things happen. I, I promise we will be doing some digital painting classes here soon. Let's see. So again, don't be afraid to throw your questions up in chat. Now you can keep working on this and keep adding uh, contrast to this, but I thought this one turned out pretty well. It's got quite some vibrant colors here. It looks almost good enough to eat. All right. Well, since we don't have any questions, I just want to say thanks for tuning in tonight. I hope you enjoyed this painting class. And again, you can always rewatch this. Uh, also, I have other videos up if you want to check those out. And if you're wanting to do more watercolor or other things. Uh, this week, I actually got in Golden's new So Flat uh, acrylic paint. So I did a review on that. And I will have a video showing how those paints work soon. So check out that stuff. I really appreciate you being here. And I plan to see you uh, not next Thursday. Next Thursday is Patreon only. But the following Thursday, I will be back here on YouTube with a free uh, class. And so come check it out. And if you want to become a Patreon subscriber, you just have to go to patreon.com forward slash gumption. So thanks, guys. And I will see you next time.